I feel like I can revisit the centers over and over again, and I'll always learn something a little different. I can listen to like Ra talk about like the same things, but you'll hear it a little differently, or you're a little bit further through your deconditioning process, and you have like another experience. So like you bite and catch on to something else, and it like goes a little deeper every time. So it's always fun. Absolutely. And to sort of bring it home for people who might be a little bit new or as this word is getting out, um, this is the newest science on the plane. Been around since the early 90s. And this, what you're looking at, what you're going to get out of this is master diagnostics on the things that you are and that you are not. And this is genetic. So it's in your core and you can't help it. It's just what we're going to go through tonight is will be very profound to certain people. And the best part is you can count on it. You can I forget what movie this was in, but you can take that to the bank. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. That was an awful Steven Seagal movie. Forget I said it. But, you know, um, anyway, it was moving cute. on. You're cute. Yep. Cool. So we're just going to go through starting off at talking about the nine centers overall. So and then we're going to go further into detail into the head, Ajna and throat after this section. So first center we're going to talk about is the throat center, which is the manifestation center. The throat center is like a town square where all the energy comes together. It's like all roads lead to Rome. I believe there's like 11 channels like that come uh, into the throat center. So like everything is trying to go from the top and the bottom out through the throat to like out existence into the world. Um, the throat center uh, helps us speak and express our thoughts and ideas. This center is crucial for manifesting our desires and communicating effectively. And it's also where our human intelligence finds its voice. You can think mm -hmm. of it as the center that gives us the power to express ourselves uniquely. Absolutely. Can I say one thing? Yeah, that, please. Um, it's all the roads lead to Rome. And later when we go over the various streams of awareness, you'll see they all dead end at the throat. That's why it's the center of expression. And it's the center of making us do stuff. Um, crucial for manifesting our desires and communications effectively. Absolutely. That was it. That was great. That was interesting. It's like, like I, I like how you said like the dead end, and I never thought of it that way. But it's like they I mean, end there. Just, like everything don't gonna, just like, lead to Rome. They end there. They end you know there. That's I mean? that's like a different way of thinking about. It. I love it. Yep. So all the pressure, all the pressure from the pressure sandwich, the red and the root. They all pressure all this stuff and they all go straight to the throat. The only thing that doesn't experience that pressure um, is 2145. Mm, that's interesting. Uh, so for our not self questions with the throat is, am, am I trying to get attention? Right. So the throat center, if it's undefined, if it's open, if it's not colored in on your chart, that means we're going to be picking up energy from like other people, other places. So other people's throat energy is going to be like amplified in us. And we're going to feel this like incredible pressure to blurt things out. So the thing that we can notice to pay attention to ourselves, if that center is open for you, is am I trying to get attention? Am I trying to manifest something? Am I trying to make something happen? Am I pushing too hard? Am I, am I following the right timing? Am I speaking in the timing that's being listened to? Or am I forcing my speech? Am I saying too much? Am I shutting up when I didn't want to? All of this stuff. So meaning, am I even, am I concerning myself with that I'm speaking? Whereas the defined throat very often forgets to even concern itself that it's speaking. It just doesn't even concern itself. I mean, not always, but more so. <clears throat> So the next ones we're going to be talking about is the head and the root because they're pressure centers, right? So the bottom on the root is pressuring us to do something. And from the top, the head center is pressuring us to think about stuff and ask questions. So the head and root, um, they're two pressure centers. They push energy towards the awareness centers. They'll be filtered through there and then they continue on to the way to the throat. Uh, the head center helps us think and ask questions. It passes the energy to the Ajna to find the answers. The root mm. center on the other side, conversely, gives us the drive to survive and move forward. And it also fuels our actions and our momentum in life. And finally, mm. this energy is refined by other centers before reaching the throat for communication or action. Mm, absolutely. And, and uh, we're in a pressure sandwich. If you just look at it visually, pressure from above, pressure below. And it really is a pressure sandwich because if all the roads lead to Rome, they're all under pressure is a thing. If you're open in any of these centers, you've got a saying, you get to say, you won't believe it at first, but it's not your pressure. Mm -hmm. It's not your pressure. 
It's and that's uh, yes, it is my pressure. That's that's who you're not speaking at that moment. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. And so then the not self questions for both centers, uh, for the uh, open head center is, that, am I trying to answer everyone else's questions? So if that's open for you, if that's uh, white, not colored in on your chart, then you can pay attention. Like, am I trying to answer other people's questions? Or am I trying to answer questions that people aren't even asking or being caught in like a figure it out loop? And if we can notice that and kind of like pause and pull ourselves out of it, it's a lot more comfortable. And then- yeah, my Am I under pressure to figure it out that I mean, you already fleshed it out. You know, am, am I concerning myself with thinking that I think I have to think about all the questions? Am I totally mentally anxious because too many things are pouring through? Too yeah. many things, I can't answer them all. Yeah. Yep. And, and it's just like, oh, wait, is that even mine to answer? And if it's not. Why am I thinking about this? Right. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like, if it's not mine, then I don't have to worry about it. Yep. So then finally, for the root center, we have. Uh, am I trying, am I in a hurry to get things done so I can be free of the pressure? Yeah. The, the root center, it's like this, like adrenalized. It's like this, like gas in your engine, like go do this thing. Um, and then it's just like, oh, if I finish it, then, then I could chill out. Then I can rest. If I just do this thing, then I could rest. But it's like a never ending to do list of like another thing, another thing, another thing. Um, and so if we can like pause and pull out of that, if you can just chill before adding another thing to the to-do list. Absolutely. And when we talk about the not self pressure, we're talking about this thing that really isn't us. And it and it becomes profound when you get your chart read. And we do this analysis over time, you'll see that's not yours. The head center has a, a thing it needs to do. It needs to translate our existence. It's under pressure to pressure the translation of our existence. I mean, like from everything, you know, why am I here? Um, and that's a big deal. And the root center here is creating the pressure that finds the balance between fear and trust. Oh, no, we're good. I trust it. Oh, I'm not good. I fear it. And, and it's, it's, it's dumb, meaning it's not an awareness center. It's simply a fuel. The gasoline does not know why it explodes. You know, you can't ask it. It won't write a paper for you. Um, you know, the awareness centers will. And so it's under pressure to, again, find that balance between, you know, fear and trust, basically. And other things about this root center, as I've always noticed, even in myself, we become uh, multitaskers, which isn't really multitasking, but it sort of <laughs> is, right? I mean, so I always make the joke, this is the open root center is the person who's answering a text while they're with voice while they're stirring their coffee and closing the refrigerator door with their left foot so that they can get out the door about 18 seconds faster, maybe. And then half the time they spill that coffee and they're out the door two minutes late. Same thing with going fast down the road. I watch open root centers go too fast, too fast, too fast. And then after a while that burns out and then they won't go fast enough. Yep. Yeah, really good to know of like that if you have that open in your chart, it's like that pressure is not for you. Like if that's white, if that's not colored in on your chart, that's not your pressure both to do stuff or to speak. It's not yours, and that's hard to grasp grasp with. And all these pressures are pointing at these awareness centers. Mm -hmm. We are aware creatures, and the solar plex is the newest awareness waking up. So that's what we're looking at right now. These are the three awareness centers. If you notice, the pressure centers are pointing right at them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So now for those awareness centers, it's the spleen, it's the ajna, and the emotional solar plexus, right? So... Uh, the spleen, if when you're looking at it, it's that brown triangle on the left side of the chart. The ajna is the one up by the head. And then the green one is the emotional solar plexus. And they help us become conscious of ourselves in different ways. The spleen, uh, the splenic center focuses on body awareness and for survival. It's like the, our oldest awareness center. It's that like in the moment existential, like survive kind of awareness. And it's then our the quietest. Other. It's the quietest oh, yeah. one as well. It speaks softly. Yeah, and it only says it once. It'll just be like, cross the street. And if you don't do it, then it's like, well, we'll see what happens if you don't. Right. <laughs> and then the second one is the Ajna Center, which focuses on mental awareness for thinking. And then the final one is the Solar Plexus Center, which focuses on emotional awareness for relationships. That awareness for thinking, by the way, is this, it's a, essentially a desire for certainty, a certain amount of certainty. And uh, 
that that's that's what's going on there. And what was the last one? The solar plex? The solar plexus, yeah. The emotional awareness of the solar plexus and being able to like ride out that wave, which ultimately the emotional solar plexus is the most powerful of the motors. When it's yep. in alignment, when it waits out that up and down of its wave, it's actually the most powerful to make things happen. So you need to like ride out those ups and downs. Well, the most powerful of the of the awareness is sacral is the most powerful motor because of its sustaining power. But they can they, these guys can compete. Don't get me wrong; the solar oh, plexus can overpower can overpower everything. There's no question. Um, the keynotes of these centers that need to get that need to get sort of risen. I'm not sure if it's there, but this um, spleen is awareness in the now. So it's got a frequency. I'm going to label the frequencies. The frequency is moment to moment. That's it. So it's always new, new now. It's like a metronome, new now, new now, new now. Um, the the frequency of the Ajna is is memory over all of time. So if it happened in third grade and you're still upset about it, that's the Ajna holding on to over all of time. And now here comes the split, the solar plex, and it's like let's settle both of these things. It's a process of becoming clear in a wave over time, and and it's really becoming clear over time, but it's in a wave. So if you're emotional, you have to go up and down through an emotional wave. And it's going to be terribly uncomfortable if you don't know what that is. Um, but those are the frequencies, awareness in a, in a wave up and down o- over time where you become clear and finally you can know. And then you can never really know with the Ajna. It's just a toy box. It, it's not It's not an authority. Um, and then the spleen is just, hey, you're safe, not safe, safe, not safe. It's process of, of spontaneous awareness in the now. That's great. I always love yeah. listening to your commentary. I'm like, Ooh. I feel like a textbook, man. I love this. You always pull it out of me. Yay. Perfect. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> no, I love you more. Um. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> before we get lost in the love fest, um, so let's, for compete, the not- Moni, let's compete over that. Ab- yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, for the not solve questions, right? So, if you have these centers undefined, if they're white, not colored in on your chart, then pay attention to these questions. So, for the spleen, right, that body, that intuitive awareness, that in the moment safety. So the open spleen, uh, you can ask yourself, am I holding on to things that aren't good for me? Am I clinging? Am I afraid that, oh, if I don't have this, then I won't be able to survive and make it. And you end up clinging to something that's not actually good for you. Yep. And there's a couple other things. The open spleen sometimes tries to be spontaneous when it's not. The spleen oh, yeah. is pure, purely spontaneous. And sometimes when it's open, you'll make spontaneous decisions in an attempt to hold on to things that aren't good for you. Mm. But just to hold on to things and People. things that are yeah. So I mean, you ship and you can't let that person go. They have a defined spleen. You don't. You'll find mm-hmm. that a lot. It's, it's things of that oh, nature. Oh yeah, clings in. Uh, secondary for the Ajna, if you have that open, undefined, white, not colored in on your chart, the question you can pay attention to is: Am I trying to convince everyone else that I am certain? Am I trying to prove that I know this when I probably don't, but I feel like I need to? Hmm. Mm, yeah, certainty, concerning yourself with certainty, um, that yourself when you can't be certain, you can put the head center together with it, you're under pressure to figure out the certainty that's not yours. And now it's so important you rely on your strategy and authority so that you can have the right timing. It doesn't mean you can't be certain. What it means is if you try and be certain, you can rest assured you're going to run into the not self of that, which which is a liar, by the way. Mm-hmm. It's a big, fat, vocal liar. Um, mm-hmm. when it's acting out, it's not self and little lies, by the way, but it, they add up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just tangles it into like a knot and all of a sudden you're this. Yeah, no, I'm not. Oh yeah. I'm okay. No, I, I can be there. No, that, that, I knew that. How about this? I knew that. Oh gosh. Liar. You yeah. th- <laughs> and now you're so afraid you might get called out. You're not paying attention. You're into your not self. You're mm. no longer present because the, the mind pulls you out of the presence quickly. Spleen guarantees presence unless you ignore it solar plex guarantees plenty of presence because you're in a freaking wave that hurts if you don't know what it is mind is just confusion and 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 it holds and the ajna that holds on to this over all of time so all this week you said no 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 i totally knew what that was when you know you're going to meet up with that person on friday and you didn't know what that was Mm-hmm. And so you might find yourself spending hours studying a YouTube video to figure out what that thing was so you don't look like a fool and then it never got asked. You know, uh, stuff. You're not you. When you're trying to be certain about things, it's who you're not. You, you, what you do is you recognize, 
your certainty after the fact. After your authority and your strategy kick in, it kicks in and says, no, no, dude, we don't know. We don't know. If you have it open, I don't know becomes your friend. Whereas before, I don't know was one of the harder things to say. I'm not sure. Can't tell. You're supposed to know that. The job title says I'm supposed to know it and I still don't know. I'm not sure. Damn, like you're personally deconditioning me. <laughs> oh, yay. Thank you, Moni. Thank you. You're the one who's doing all the good stuff. Um, so finally, for our last awareness center, the emotional awareness, your solar plexus, uh, if that's open, undefined, white in your chart, then the question you can ask yourself is, I am I avoiding confrontation and truth? Because yep. we can be so afraid of the emotional people around us of like, oh, no, if they're in a bad mood, it's going to feel really bad and trying to keep everyone happy. Absolutely. And and it's since all of these centers are in all of us, whether they're defined or not, it's all in the world. So trust me, your spleen is trying to be afraid, whether it's defined or not. Your mind is holding on to all of those things that you experienced your whole life every time the emotional wave went into you and was uncomfortable and you had to avoid it. it this thing is so powerful. It goes into you from the other who is defined and suddenly it doesn't feel good and you just want to get out. You're like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be here. And then you amplify it. That's one way you can know for sure with the solar plex, you'll start amplifying. If a person is making a conflict and you can't get out, you become more aggressive than they were um, or can be anyways. It's a common <laughs> tendency. And, yeah. and so am I avoiding confrontation and truth? And yeah, you are. I was. Cool. So next we're going to go through the motor centers, right? So we have the root, the sacral, the emotional solar plexus, and the heart. So if you're looking on the chart we have here on the bottom, that orange square is the root center. The gray one, one up is the sacral. The uh, green triangle, which we also just talked about, is the solar plexus, your emotional center. And then the yellow funny little triangle is the will center, your heart, your motor. Um, so the root, solar plexus, sacral, and heart centers are all motor centers. They give us the energy to live our lives and to make things happen. The roots center keeps us moving forward. It's like a new adrenalized, like, hey, do this thing. Okay, now do this thing. It's like a go energy. The uh, solar plexus drives our desires for experiences and relationships, right? And that one's we're going to be waiting out that wave up and down and up and down. And then when you're ready, it's like go. Uh, the yep. The sacral center provides the energy for creativity and reproduction. If you have that defined, that's that uh-huh, uh-uh. That diaphragm that's going to say, is this good for me? Do I got the energy or do I not? And then finally, we have the heart center, which powers our will to survive and thrive. The heart center, I see it's like the nitro boost. You know, it's the heart that's resting, and then it's going to go do something. It's pumping and it's resting. It's pumping and it's resting. And you can like kind of nitro boost, and then you got to wait for that nitro boost to fill back up before you can use it again. So can we move backwards and start with the ego will center, the heart center? I think that's a great idea. Yeah, um, because we don't need to touch as much on the two that we just spoke about. But um, yeah. it's this is the one center that acts like a throat center, because in the tribe, all roads lead to the will, to mm -hmm. the heart. But every other every other um, system, they all lead to the throat. Um, so everything dead ends into the will center, into this heart center, and it's the ability to keep a tribal bargain, to keep the tribe going. It's the sensitivity to the needs to support things and and to do stuff. And as Rob would always put it, to build the temples, you know, because it's a lot of work, dude. A lot of stone, people die, you need slaves, it's no good. You know, I mean, it's hard. And in the old days, the ego willpower held the whip that built the um that built these things in our modern day life it's the ego willpower to mend the fence to go do the artwork to 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 bring a village together to feed the people and to be tribal and up close where you can smell it and taste it it's personal mm -hmm. and it's loyalty and it's fierce loyalty and it's hunting it's you got to admit it's a big deal to lay your hand on a beast and extinguish it of its life I mean, yeah, that's a pretty, that's a bargain you're making with that animal and you're going to feed me. And in the, the blood meantime, of the tribe, the blood of the heart. Yes. And in the meantime, um, the butcher is going to do that in 1949. That's the channel that synthesizes that. And, um, and at the same time, that, that animal 
basically fulfill the bargain because right before it with tribe was like, Hey, we herded you. We kept you safe. You could have your babies. The wolves couldn't get at you every once in a while. We're going to take one of you guys and eat you. That's sort of this mystical bargain. And that's, it's the will center that can basically answer the questions as to why we see so many animals on cave walls and why they're so mystified in the sky and our constellations. We have a relationship with these animals because we've been taking their lives for our sustenance. That's pretty personal. And that's the work of the tribe. And the tribe is is fathered or mothered, parented by the ego. The ego is the will. It's a powerful motor. It does the thing. Don't compete with an ego, dude. They do the thing. If well, if you're a non-ego and they're an ego and you're both just about as good and you're going head to head in competition, the ego is going to do whatever it takes to win in that moment, you know, um, and that's a beautiful thing. So for our not self questions, right? So for the sacral center, the gray square, if you have that open, undefined white, it's not colored in on your chart, the question you can ask yourself is, do I know when enough is enough? Mm. Cause we'll mm. just keep going. We'll just keep going. We'll be just flying high and someone else's buzzy sacral energy and just overwork ourselves and like flail out until it's like overdone. So if you start feeling yourself buzzing, you know, my projectors, my manifestors, my reflectors, if you feel yourself buzzing, go lay down. Go just be horizontal. You don't got to sleep. Just just go be horizontal and rest. Another another good one, it, um, especially if you have right facing arrows on your body graph, go gray out. Stare at something that you're not really staring at after a little while, um, uh, just for even 10 minutes. Listen to a song that's your the song you like so you can go go away is really the thing. Go away. Yeah. Uh, mentally uh, go rest. Like you said, if you can literally go lay down horizontally or recline, um, stuff like that. That was Absolutely. really good. Yep. And then finally yep. for our will center, our heart center, that little yellow triangle, if you have that white, you know, undefined, not colored in on your chart, uh, you can ask yourself, do I think I have something to prove? Or am I trying to prove myself? Am I trying to show that I can do it? I can keep up with other people that I'm worthy. Um, and if you're trying to prove yourself, stop. You don't have to do that. It's not you. Yeah, right. I have an open ego and I've got nothing to prove. And that's the thing you have to tell yourself. Um, when you first hear yourself telling yourself this, you're going to think it's a cliche. That's the not self monkey mind trying to define truth for you. And it cannot. Um, you'll see quickly. You're not here to prove anything. You know who is the ego people. Let them prove it. It's great. We, yeah, we become the observers of that proof. Um, and, and you can know you're really butting up against it if you've got this gnawing thing inside of you that doesn't feel worthy, not sure if it's good enough, doesn't want to answer the phone because it might not have the right answer, doesn't want to do certain things, or, or the worst of all is, hey, how come that person's doing the thing so much better than me? Mm. If you find yourself asking that question, how come they're famous? How come they're this? How come, the, you know, I did the same thing. How come I'm not as good? It's you're not not as good. Um, it's just the timing wasn't right for whatever. Not everyone gets to be wealthy and famous, you know, but ego people will tend to make more money because they have the ego will to demand it. Generally speaking, so. Yeah. Comparison yep. is the thief of joy. Is the what? Is the thief of joy. Oh, that's it could be. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, and in you know. any regard on any of these centers, like that's the not self. You're, there you go. Your comparison your, is your not self. Your not self is the thief of joy because it's like, it's not you. It's not your trip. And it's like, you have no idea what somebody else's life is. You, have, like, Leave like, it you know, oh, go ahead. Finish your thought. I was just going to say, it's like, you can see the guy who's just like driving around in a convertible with like the sexy girl and all that. And you can like think like, oh, that guy's got it. And it's like, you have no idea like what is going on in his life and like how miserable he might be underneath like a facade. And it's just like, you don't want other people's problems. Like a couple of those things that are in, incumbent in what you were just pointing out with is that guy driving around that convertible 70, you know, 65% of the planet has this will center open. and um, and because of that, that guy, chances are, is open ego, you know, chances are. And all that stuff is there to fill and supplement the openness of his will center to try and prove something he didn't need to prove. Mm -hmm. It's it's really gross. It makes us do really, really yucky things. Um, absolutely. Can I can I do something with cool with this to show properties of these charts? 
I mean, I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna. Do you want to, or do you want to give it a try? Or do you want me to do it? To keep this is what we do. So we 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 stack up various aspects of your chart when we're reading for you, when we're letting you know the things, so that you can finally have the fruitful life you've always wanted, and come to know this knowledge in yourself, grow. Um, but what we do is we take these various aspects. Like here's four aspects right now in this chart. These four centers. These are all keynoted. Meaning we can say something about each one of them separately. If all if these four centers are open in a body graph, keynote the misery that person is unjustly putting themselves through. Do you want me to do it yeah. or would you like to? I can try it. I can try it. So uh, under pressure to prove yourself, to avoid conflict and not knowing when enough is enough. Absolutely. Yeah. And it sounded like a simple thing she just did, but it's not. It's profound. You're looking and reading this person, a person I'm reading for you, and suddenly you'll be saying stuff. And I'll be like, that's because you're under pressure. You forgot and lost track of when enough was enough. All your energy that you don't have to sustain is trying to sustain because you need to prove you were worthy. And the people you're trying to prove it to, you're going to have a conflict with if you don't. And so now you're going to run away and hide or lie and burn yourself out. It's awful. Ah, thank you, Moni. Was thank that good you. for you, honey? That was great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, finally, our last center, the identity center. So that's that little uh, diamond right in the center of mm -hmm. the body graph, right? So The jewel. Yeah. The G center is also known as the identity center. It's like a magnetic compass. It's a magnetic monopole. So it's like a one-way facing magnet. So it's just like pulling us onto like our trajectory of like where we're supposed to be going and what's supposed to be coming towards us. It's the center of the body graph and it shapes our sense of self and our direction in life. It's our uh, the center for love and direction and how you love and how you move through the world. It's the center that connects our unique energy to the broader flow of life. And it's where we feel connected to the universe and our purpose. And finally, the G center pulls life towards us, guiding us along our journey. That all sounds, and it's all incredibly true. And if we just left it at that, you would wonder why did they print so much on a fortune cookie? If we only left it at that, this is such clinical truth sitting inside this center, the way it hooks us onto our geometry beyond our capacity to understand that. All I can tell you is if we start reading the gates in your G center and in your body graph and in your nodes, we're gonna find out 10 years later why you are where you are from whence you came. And then it won't sound so much like a fortune cookie anymore. Holy cow. I'm genetically predisposed to do what the G Center does. You know, this identity that it proposes for us to be, its that seems like a nebulous word. Oh, this is the home of your identity. If we leave it at that, it's like, oh, that's cute. What does that mean? <laughs> right? So, but it's very specific because there's the, of all the centers, only one center houses two um completely two incarnation crosses and that's this center all of the vessel of love and all of the sphinx are in this center only and what's it tell us the direction of humanity is towards communion empowered by love i mean the universal love of all things the love of humanity the love of ourself the love of our bodies in this world walking around experiencing things if you don't think you love your body have sex with your partner you'll find out you love your body okay <laughs> And you'll think that's not enough. It is. It's there. My point being is it's just it's a proof positive that genetically speaking, love is a force, just like Einstein said before he died. He was like, I, I should have published this long ago. He was probably afraid of the conflict. You know what I mean? And he and so forth. I should have done this long ago. I've determined that love is a force in the universe, he said. He couldn't explain all of it, mm -hmm. but he was able to put it into a, an equation, L equals MC squared, and he did it past the speed of light, and he was serious. And the love that is in this, the vessel of love, this these four gates that are the vessel, empower the direction. And gate two of this direction is the home of the magnetic monopole. This monopole is a physical phenomenon. The scientists have been looking for it for for several decades now because they theorize for it because they're smart of course they theorize for it something else is acting on the universe and when they can't tell what it is there's one in each of us mm -hmm. <laughs> as soon as they get their microscopes right or however that's going to work and their measurements right they're going to find there's a monopole in every living man and woman mm -hmm. and child and 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 it's a monopole it only attracts you could look at it like a positively charged magnet 
that's only positive and it doesn't have its other side, which is impossible right now. Um, but this is possible, more possible it's in us. And because it attracts, it attracts us into a direction. And then the gates across the top provide that direction. Seven and one and uh, 13. They guarantee a direction that pays attention to right now, pushes our creativity in a marshalling direction that held on to the past to tell the stories and drive communion. Humans are supposed to get along. New slash, you know. It's one way. It's not the other. And the final thing was uh, the not self question for the identity center. If that's undefined and open in your chart, it's am I looking for love and direction? So when oh, someone, yeah. yeah, when someone has that defined in their chart, when it's colored in, it's kind of like being on like a, a streetcar, like one of those trolleys and like we're going a specific way. When you have that open or undefined, you get to like jump onto different people's streetcars. Mm. So when somebody has that like undefined and open, they can feel like, oh no, like I don't have a specific way of loving and, and, and moving through the world. Like it's not defined. I love and I move in these different ways, but knowing that you're inherently lovable and valuable and you get to have like the uh, buffet, the poo-poo platter of like all the different ways of loving and moving through the world. So enjoy and, it. And will I find love and direction? Where is my love and direction? Because this is identity and identity is unique and incredibly personal to the being one at a time. So you can feel terribly lost in moments that say, I don't know where my love and direction is. I'm married, but I can't tell if I love my partner, uh, stuff like that. I, I don't know if I love me. I can't tell my love, is my love moving in the right direction? And are you concerning yourself with love and direction? If you are, that's who you're not. As soon as you stop, this is a thing. There's all this Zen knowledge out there, right? There's all this amazing knowledge out there that points out when you don't try, you get. When you observe, you see. When, right, all of these things. When you allow, in it comes, right? It's, uh, these are all, And they're all passive principles. They're all these passive allowing reducing the expectations down to near minimum and and then they become an active principle after they've been passive if you allow it and then you actively will move in that right direction and find that love and direction that you were hoping for so oh, that's so lovely it is